Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal. It is Paranormal Podcast Day. Yes, so excited. I'm here with Kat as normal. Um, yeah, and we have a... I'm just going to bring her in. Just come on in, Kat, okay? In. We don't even need the introduction. Let's just do the thing, okay? How's Crystal doing today? <sighs> Crystal is... I feel very autumn. You know what I mean? Like... I have a black hat on. I know you can't see me. I have a black hat on, and I no. have an orange shirt. It's like this orange, like very. F I just feel like I belong in a pumpkin patch today. You know what I'm saying? Aww. How is Cat today? How is Cat? Good. I went like impromptu Halloween shopping. Yeah. Went to Five Below because um, Crystal had sent me a few snaps of her going to Five Below the other day, uh -huh. and they had like a bunch of really cool witchy books. So I was like, I need to go. So yes. I drove 30 minutes out and then went to TJ Maxx. Yeah, guys, if you want witchy books, Five Below has like an entire aisle full of witchy books. There's like horoscope books, there's star books, astrology books, moonology books, moon planners, crystal books. I mean, literally every. There's even some tarot books. And like, I I'm, got that. Did you? Yes, it's a tarot guidebook where it gives you like all of the info for the tarot meanings and it, it re it's reverse state and it's really like informative. It's a thick book. Like, it's five dollars. <laughs> I called Cat the other day. I went shopping yesterday and I called Cat and I was like, I went in Five Below by accident and it's literally packed with witchy books. She's like, I have to go tomorrow. And she literally was like, <laughs> gone. I was like, bye. Yep. I got all the stuff that I needed to get done this morning, and I was like, I'm gone. Oh, my God. Jesus. See you in five hours. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Five Below. If you're Like, what's another good store that's had some witchy stuff? Home Goods has had lots of witchy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. TJ Maxx has had some witchy stuff. Michaels. Michaels. See, our Michaels Go have in. nothing yet. Really? Ugh. New England is, like, where <sighs> it's at right now. God. Maybe we get it first sick. for once. We get everything last normally. So yeah, have I haven't tried Joann's. I haven't tried Joann's. I don't yeah. like, like, there's only two Joann's in the city. And one's all the way in, in Henderson, and then one's, like, way up north in, like, the middle of Vegas. And it's just, like, an awkward location. Uh, so I have to make, like, now you're going to make me have a special trip tomorrow. Well, like, I'm going to Joann's. Target. Target, too, though. See, but Target, Target okay, they've had a couple, like, witchy shirts that I saw, but nothing, like, Halloween out yet at Target either here. Really? It's abuse. It's Weird. absolute abuse that we're not getting witchy stuff, okay? You know why? It's because right now it's 108 outside, and they're like, they don't need Halloween shit yet. Oh, my God. That was my car the other day. Mm -hmm. Remember when I sent you that photo? I, I went in my car after leaving it outside for, like, literally just an hour, and the inside of my vehicle was 108. Which is weird for New England, yeah. right? Like, that's not normal. It is. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like fifty percent humidity here. <laughs> so Ew. it's like hundred eight and you can't breathe. So And um, water. And water's in the and air. You're breathing in water, literally. <laughs> See and ours is our heat finally will start to dissipate next week. But it won't really like so you know, hundreds is pretty normal for the summer. That's why they say from like June to August, don't come to Vegas. It's like 108, 110. We honestly yeah. haven't had that many super hot days though. Normally in the summer we'll hit like 114, 115. We only hit that like one day this summer. So we got wow. really lucky, I think. Yeah. So the next yeah. next week at Tuesday, I think is the last day for like a hundred and six day. And then it drops to like 90. So we're finally like ah, almost there. I hate yeah. the summers here. Like eventually I will have a summer house somewhere else and I will not. I do love Vegas, but I will not be here for the summers for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't, too hot. I don't like the summers in New England either. If I could find a place that was just summer, not summer, was just, it was like just summer. Around. <laughs> you could, I'm just combobulate it today. Okay. <laughs> Um, the fall is like, I want to find a state or a country that's fall year round. That'd be okay, nice. take me there. Take me there. See, spring, I think, is like the best time in Vegas. Like, it's like 70, 80 degrees, like February to like 
middle of June, it is perfect in Vegas. Mm. The rest, I mean, the, I'm not complaining about the winters. It's just I would probably like to be somebody that had, like, a winter home. Like, I don't know. I don't want to be in the snow. Like, growing up in Colorado changed my perspective on snowman. Like yeah, you got the worst of it. You do, well, is New England that you've been to like Colorado? You drove through it, and like you thought you were prepared for it, but you're really it's it's different, isn't it? It is. We've had it's weird because we've had quite a few blizzards, and we actually had I think it was back in like the early 2000s. We had a power outage for 10 days. Mm-hmm. Literally, almost the whole state of New Hampshire was shut down with this huge ice storm that happened. Mm-mm. So it's like we get cold fronts pretty frequently, but but then they go away after like a month. You know, like it's they they don't stay, but in in Colorado they stay. Yeah, they're like I I like I would love to like I'm gonna be buying my aunt's home that's it's been in our family for generations. My uncle's not ready to get rid of it yet, but when he is, I'm gonna be buying it and keep it in the family, obviously. But you know, I'd love to like go in and renovate it and like you know two weeks out of the winter like experience snow. But the problem with Colorado is it's such high elevation. Even Denver, yeah. like Denver, isn't as bad if you're like in Aspen or like Crested Butte or something. But when it snows, man, like it, there's times it'll shut the city down for like two weeks at a time, and it's that's the part that I don't miss because like then you have people that aren't from Colorado who don't know how to prep for that weather who will literally go to the store like when the pandemic happened and they will wipe you out on all the food and you don't know when you're going to be able to get to the store next because it's snow you get snowed in you know what I mean so that's the kind of snow I don't miss if I could pick and choose to like be in the snow like over Christmas you know like for two weeks for Christmas that would be fun but like that's it do I want to live in it again it's you drove in the mountains of Colorado it's rough barely made it out I know I just got it out on, I just got out on time yeah literally like the flurries were coming in mm-hmm. and it's crazy too in Colorado because like the highway is so steep yep going like down you went through Eisenhower and, Tunnel didn't you <laughs> oh my gosh like literally barely we got through it Chris was like go 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 I, go. I was watching radar out. and Kat's like she told me I'm gonna be fine like I've driven in snow and I'm like Kat I don't think you get it like this is the Rocky Mountains and it's like steep and it's you're driving through the mountains and then there's a flurry like a snowstorm that's shutting down the highway as they somehow beat it I don't even know how you beat the snow but you would have been snowed in and stuck on Eisenhower, and I was like, and you were sliding down the mountain, weren't you? Oh yeah, we were even seeing like the big semis, mm-hmm. like going up the mountain, like they had trail, off trail stuff for the semis. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, it's not so funny. They, like, fly off the road. So I guess my point in this conversation is I want a milder winter than that. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> growing up, and then like you grow up, like I would hate to have kids in Colorado because. Me growing up in Colorado, like, every Halloween, I had to plan my outfits around the snow because it was always snowing on Halloween. So you could never be, like, your cute, out- like, fairy outfit or whatever. You always had to have, like, a onesie underneath it. <sighs> anyway, that's my I like rant. onesies, though. I mean, just... I like onesies, too. There was a Jack Skellington one at Walmart I saw the other day. Yeah. It's like, I should have bought that. Get anyway. it. Anyway, enough about onesies. Um, We have so much to... I don't know. I feel like people... I mean, Kat Kat and my... Like, when we stream, we're just, like, kind of all over the place. I think that's what people love. But then people love Elfie in my stream, too, because Elfie's so, like, regimented. And she's, like, by the book. And she's, like, we have a lot of information to fit in here. We can't squeeze anything else in. You know what I mean? So, but Kat and I, it's fun because we're, like, all over the place. So today we're, like... We're going to talk about haunted dolls, too. But, like, there's some other tea that's, like, going around. And it's... Let's start with some really happy news first. Yes. I have some wine and a... Kat has now got me stuck on... um, Mason jars. Mason jars. Yes, thank you, Kat. You've totally got me stuck on that. And this one says, which is brew on it. It's very cute. Um, We have now officially won our fourth... That's one, two, three, fourth... Film festival. Yes. Yes. Ah. Oh, ah. It just feels good. It ah. feels so good. Bask in it. You know what I mean? Breathe it in. Breathe that shit in. Um, <laughs> it's like, um, it was. You know, like I, um, it, I am humbled that my work is being recognized, and you know the amazing thing when you get signed with film festivals. Um, 
that's usually well if you win film festival i mean you don't have to win a film festival to like get it somewhere like get your project somewhere but when you win a film festival you have even more guarantees of like getting producers to reach out to you um and we're just very humbled by life is so good right now am i right yeah it just feels really it feels calm right now and you know you really got to just take that when it comes for sure especially in a world that's so chaotic nowadays mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? that's true well and i mean it wasn't just my work recognized it was all of our work recognized the whole crew put so much blood sweat and tears into it and of course i've talked about my struggles which i feel like life is just that is life like everybody has struggles and I think that that's how you relate to people is when you overcome things and you get on the other side, you're like, yes, bitch, like you did it. You know what I mean? And I'm just yeah. so, I can't, I, I never in my wildest dreams did I think we would win one film festival, let alone four. So we are very, 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 very blessed. Um, very now, along with this um, changing world, like Kat has mentioned, um, there's been some interesting things that we're having to adapt to. And um, I have been an extra on set for the last couple of weeks um, for something that I can't talk about it, so don't ask me what it is. Um, something that's shooting in downtown Vegas. I'm just an extra. I don't have any lines. But the world of film has now changed along with what we've gone through with the pandemic. And I've always wanted to be very clear and transparent with you guys on things that we have as challenges on this journey. And one of the challenges that we have learned is that um, production companies and producers and studios are absolutely requiring you to be vaccinated in order to film on set. Mm -hmm. And it's actually more than that. If you're not vaccinated, they will not allow you on set because they don't want anyone getting sick. And if you're not vaccinated, um, you're a liability, essentially. And on top of that, they also give you a COVID test 24 hours before you go on set. And um, if it's negative, you can continue. And if it's positive, um, you'll be removed from the set. And that's everybody down to the PAs are being tested up to like the biggest um, star, whoever's performing in it. And so we have now learned that as we move forward, that's going to be a requirement for um, us as well, unfortunately. And um, I wanted to just talk about why that's a liability and, and take the politics out of it. Cause it's not even political if you want to do the vax or you don't do the vax. I don't really care what your opinion is. Cause this isn't my rules that I'm making. It's the head honchos of the industry that are making these rules. Um, right. And liabilities are, they pull liability insurance out on all of us when we're filming on set. Even me as an extra downtown right now, I have liability on me, which means if I get injured on set, they are forced to pay for it. So let's say I fall down a flight of stairs and the medical costs are like $100,000 out of pocket, their liability insurance covers you. Um, if you're on set and you get sick or something happens, let's say even with COVID, these people are coming out right now with million dollar bills, which is crazy because our health industry sucks. And what would end up happening if you ended up with that on set, you the, the liability insurance would have to cover it because you became sick or made the crew sick when it happened. Now, the other thing you have to take in, in mind is like filming with a small crew, you have deadlines. You have deadlines that you have to achieve. If even one person gets sick and it sets back the deadlines, you're in really big trouble with the network or whoever you're filming for. And not only can you get fired, but that's considered breach of contract and they can sue you for the amount of production that they basically funded for. So they see um, unvaccinated people as being too big of a liability with the liability insurance and they will not allow it um, right now. And so that's just a new thing that we've been learning recently. Um, and another extra thing of how our world is changing and um, it's crazy. And you just kind of have to work with it, I guess. You know what I mean? You can't fight it. You just have to work with it. Um, but, you know, Kat and Elfie both also expressed that you guys don't really want to work around anyone who's unvaccinated because we don't want to get sick and die either. I can't imagine, like, finally getting, obtaining the dream and then you get sick with COVID and you're in the hospital for, you know, four months. Ooh, that respirator. <sighs> yeah. I told Crystal, I'm convinced that COVID is kind of like the new age tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. because of how much it affects your respiratory system and that's like terrifying to mm -hmm. think about 
especially as someone with like major asthma. Same. You know? Yeah, I'm so. a liability um, because I have autoimmune disease as well. So you do too. Yep. And yep. Um, but like, it, it's crazy because you just who was anticipating? Like, I don't think anybody wanted to be in the middle of a pandemic. Like, this isn't fun for anybody. You know what no, I mean? No, and there's no saying either when this is going to end. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the scary part, but it, it's easier when you just go with the flow with it and mm -hmm. just kind of trust the process as it goes along, and that's really all any of us can do. That's true. That's so. true. So that's where we're at. So that's a new thing I just thought I'd throw in there because I told you guys I would let you know the process and that's things that we're still learning on this road so it's been an, an interesting road um, now there's a couple other things of, of paranormal tea that's been going around and do we want to talk about Katrina first or do we want to talk about the other thing first first which one Katrina, Katrina first Katrina. <laughs> okay so Katrina's from paranormal state as you guys know and she just tweeted last week about a couple of days ago really that um, she is now doing a new series with her other former friend from Paranormal State, but they will be um, putting it on YouTube. So I found that really interesting. It's called Travel with the, e the Dead. It's premiering on YouTube. You can subscribe to her YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Katrina Weidman, as I pronounce her name, W-E-I-D-M-A-N. Um, and she's saying that it's going to premiere. First episode is 9-8 of 21. Um, and then the title is, or I guess the caption is, Come Travel with the Dead with me and my best ghoul pal, Too Much, Heather Taddy, uh, from Paranormal State and Alien Highway. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, is Portals to Hell still happening with Jack Osborne? Yes, it is. Um, this says a lot to me. Does it say a lot to you? Yeah, it does. It says a lot without saying a lot. Um... I'm, yeah. I'm definitely a fan of Katrina. I've always been a fan of hers. Obviously, I love Elfie, too, because of Paranormal State. Um, but let's just be real and say that Katrina's been thrown around quite a bit. It started out with Travel Channel with um, Nick Groff. And what, what was it called? Um, oh, my The gosh. Dead something or the Dead... F I don't know. Dead Highway or... No. <laughs> Dead Highway. Um, that's horrible. That's hilarious. Let's do a series called Dead Highway. Um, it's hilarious. I think that is a show. Is it? Oh, sorry. I, I didn't think it, was, I think it was a highway. No, I think it's a show. Um, okay. Let me see. Oh, Paranormal Lockdown. Duh. Uh, uh -huh. And then from Paranormal Lockdown, it got kind of weird because Elizabeth Saint got involved. And it was like, I, I don't know the tea on all that. Something about... Nick Groff, like, left his wife for Elizabeth Saint, and then it got awkward, and then, like, the show got canceled or moved or something. I don't even know what happened. It was so much drama. I was like, I don't even know. There's and then so much tea with it, that. it was bad. And then he, Nick did, like, a couple other shows, and, like, it was, like, all, it was scattered. It was really bad. So, anyway, in the midst of it, Katrina's kind of being thrown around from, like, series to series. So, the question is, how does that happen? Um, well... If she, ha let's just play pretend and let's say that she had, let's just say she had a 12 episode contract, okay? Mm -hmm. No matter what, even if like Paranormal Lockdown got canceled and she needed like, I don't know, four more episodes or something for her contract, she right. would still have to fulfill the contract, which is when I think she got kind of thrown in with Jack. Mm -hmm. So the contract stays no matter what, like you can't bail on them, you have to fulfill your contract because it's a liability, um, you can get sued for it. So I think that's why she was kind of bouncing. How do you feel about her working with Jack Osborne? And uh, he has had freaking 10 different paranormal shows, you know, lucky him probably using Ozzy Osborne's money. Bless his heart. I wish I had that opportunity. Um, but he's right. He's, he's been all over. Now he's doing something else with like a review show with ghost brothers before he was doing another review show with Ozzy and Sharon and I think it didn't go well um so that got canceled like he, they just keep getting canceled he was on Haunted Highway too like what's how do you feel about Jack and then even Jack with Katrina it's just it's uncomfortable honestly I just feel like I don't know I feel like he kind of came in out of the blue and I feel like he has money and that can get you anything you want nowadays true know um but it's uncomfortable like he's uncomfortable to watch it's awkward 
Yeah, I find him a little cringy. I find it cringy. Yeah. yeah. Like, he, he was doing Haunted Highway 2 for a while, and that was that was cringy. I mean, I understand that he likes Paranormal, obviously. Like, he wouldn't be doing it if he wasn't liking it. But it, as far as a host of a show, like, he doesn't stand out to me as a host. Like, to me, probably the best host in the genre is Josh uh, Josh Gates, in my opinion. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I can, I can watch Josh Gates for, like, 24 hours a day. Like, he just... He is- awesome it is he's funny and captivating and like you don't really get that with with jack you know what i mean um no. but then he had another episode like katrina katrina was working with him and then he had a, jack had another episode where he like he brought kelly osborne on and trust me i'm a fan of kelly osborne but they were like fighting the whole they were like fighting and bickering because it's like the brother sister vibe and you're right, it was cringy, and it was like, she was like That's getting so awful. scared, she was just like screaming and cussing the whole time. Yikes. And you're like, I can't hear the evidence, because you're like, you're screaming, you know what I mean? Like, so, and then yeah. you, you put in with Katrina, and I, I don't, I think that's a strange relationship. I don't, how do you feel about it? I don't, it's, it's awkward. Yeah. It's awkward, and random. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's really, really random, I guess, is really the only way to describe it. Mm-hmm. Well, and I watched Portals to Hell. Um, have a lot of different opinions on it. It's, it's hard for me to get through. I love Katrina. I, I think what Katrina does is great. But there was some episodes that he was investigating with the light on too. And like, how are you going to catch anomalies with the light on? Like, that's the point of the light being off. There was one episode he put the millimeter right in front of like, was it wasn't it like a light switch or something? Like on camera. And it, it went off, like, and he's like, oh my god, the, the mel meter just went off. And I'm like, because you put like, it on a, a light switch. Literally. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, he's going to keep going, obviously, because he's pulled all this these series out. You know, good for him. I tried to watch the, the one that he did with his dad, like, narrating, basically. And I love yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, but, like, Ozzy was, like, calling bullshit on, like, every paranormal thing he had. It was just, like, Ozzy, like, it's fake. It's fake, like, the whole time, you know what I mean? And, like, you could get, like, Sharon looked like she was trying to get more, like, we're on camera, they're filming us, and he was like, it's fake, like, literally, like, just didn't care. So then that got canceled. So I feel like at this point, if anyone's smart, working with, with, Jack is probably not the best place for you to be at this point. You think it was like a ratings issue? No. Meaning like to get more traction because no. of the name? No. no. I think that, I don't know what his credits are. I'd have to look. I don't know if he had EP credits. But I'm assuming if he, I assume he's EP or has money or his dad's EP. And he yeah. probably doesn't have anyone that's sort of managing it in control. And he probably doesn't have a lot of film experience. So, like, when you're EP, it's different with, like, um, with, like, a reality series or, like, doing a documentary series because there's really no director when it comes to, like, I mean, maybe if you're doing reenactments, but, but you need someone to lead it. Somebody's got to lead it. It's got to be somebody's vision, and I feel like he's kind of probably got so much money he's just like throwing it at travel channel that they're just like yeah do whatever you want you know what i mean like yeah you're funding it so whatever yikes well and he is a big name it's ozzy osbourne's son you know what i mean like i'm not denying that by any means but i think he just needed a little bit more guidance and i don't know where he's gonna find it but the person i feel bad for in this is katrina because i feel like she's always leading it yeah, she's, well, she's doing most of the work. She is. She's doing all the work, mm-hmm. literally. You know, mm-hmm. she's carrying him along. She is. Yeah, and like, he got he lucky. Show. So I'm glad that she's doing this, you know, with, especially with her friend. You know? She well, and we have, wait, what's her name? Heather Taddy. So she was on Alien Highway. Alien Highway was with Chuck Zikowski. I love Chuck Zikowski. I know him from Colorado. He's an amazing person. But I watched that series, and it got canceled after one season, and it wasn't very good. Let's just be honest. It wasn't. Um, Once again, why? Because I'm not seeing a vision. Like, I don't know who's running it. I don't know if there's a producer running it or an EP. There's a reason that Zach's show is the best, and it's because he's running it. He knows how film works, and he's running it. And people can get annoyed and get over it and bored with his demons and stuff, but it's still going, ho. So, you know, like... Yeah, somebody else do 27 seasons. Like, no, no, he's never, no one's ever going to compete with that, period. I I can tell you that right now. 
Um, but somebody has to have a vision, and I feel like it's once again muting that like knowledge of like cryptozoology or UFOs or paranormal, and then meshing it with film knowledge. And that's the side we always miss is the film knowledge. It's never always fully there. True, and it's the most important. Yeah, it really is. You well, set the tone. If you're, yeah, what does it look like? How does it feel? Like, you're, what's the beginning, the middle, and the end? What's the story you're trying to tell? What's the point of it? Like, are there protagonists, antagonists? Like, it, you have to have all of those things involved. And so Katrina gets with Heather Taddy, and good for both of them. I love strong women, and they she took it upon herself, and she's doing her own series on YouTube. You freaking get it, girl. I am so proud of her and and it honestly tells me a lot that she probably took this idea and presented it to producers whoever executive producers maybe the network and they shot it down because once again she's on a show with portals hell with Jack he's funding it and she's asking for funding and she's a girl in paranormal and they're like no you don't fit the image of paranormal it has to be ran by a masculine male and no other than Ozzy Osbourne's son. Yeah. All set. Yeah. The promo um, with Heather looks badass. It does. I'm very proud of her. She basically took the decision and put it in her hands and was like, I'm going to do this with or without you. And I'm that strong female is like not waiting around for it to happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, Elfie has some stories, too. She's been through a lot with film and producers being a woman. I And someday I hope she shares it. She may not. That's up to her if she shares her stories. I would never do that for her. But that's why Elfie and I got along so well so easily is that she really understood where I was coming from with being a girl in paranormal. And it sucks that it's just this, like, endless cycle of you're too feminine to be... A, to be in to like to run your own shit yeah. it has to be this like you know buff male or whatever like you know um the a famous metal singer's son in order to run it you know what i mean like it's just it's stupid it needs to change so i hope that she has success with youtube so i know a lot of people were uh, messaging me dming me asking me well if she's still on portals to hell hell which she confirmed that with travel channel how is it that she's able to run her own like series on YouTube? Because YouTube's considered social media. Right. And you are allowed to be in control in free range control of your own social media. So I'm sure she's hoping, which I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna support her one hundred percent. I think she's probably hoping that this goes well and maybe eventually down the line she gets picked up. For, I like, hope so. I do too. I do too. Because be it's awesome. It's crazy. So it's interesting. It must be a, um, vibes and energy in the air that we're all feeling of there's change coming to this industry for sure. 100%. Finally. God. Um, all right. So that was T number one. Yes. T number two is like, Messed up. it's a massive poo is what it is. Gross. Um, so first I heard this from Amy Bruni. Um, she obviously is her own EP. You also get it, girl. Um, she posted, she basically posted this article saying that, uh, Facebook post from a deceased former manager of Fall Rivers, Lizzie Borden, B&B, confuses friends and family members. So there's been a, a few celeb- paranormal celebrities that have spoke out about this. Um, so essentially there was a former manager that worked at Fall Rivers, Liz- Lizzie Borden B&B. Um, she tragically died in June. I'm not sure what, did you find out what she died from? No. I'm not sure no. what she died from. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she had been the manager there for quite a long time. And then out of nowhere, um, when was the date of this post? The post was made, I have it right in front of me, I'm just looking for it. The post was made seven hours ago, so it was like two or three days ago when I when I looked at this. Um, basically, somebody accessed the dead manager's social media and posted this. Hello all, I'm doing well in, pla- in the place I am. In other words, heaven or the other side, whatever you want to interpret it as. Max is here with me, which is her cat. He apparently died like... It was, it was either right before she did or right after she did. One of the it two. After. It she's, was It was? After. Okay. She's, she, he's the best boy ever. I wish to thank you all for caring for him until we were able to be together. 
I wish to thank you all for the love and energy you're sending. Love to each and every one. So, of course, the, the first pe thing people are going to say is, oh, maybe she did tweet that from heaven. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. Some of the comments did say that. Oh, I mean, please. Yikes. So, long story short is, do you think that? No. 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 Someone's messing with something. So, somebody in Lizzie Borden's is basically messing with her social media that was probably open and accessed because she was the manager there for however long she was. Um, and basically people are calling it a sick joke. Um, they did call, so it says Wilbur, which is the manager, passed away in early June, days after the closing sale of what's known as the Lizzie Borden house, the famous one that we all know. Um, it says, of course, it was featured on Ghost Adventures. Um, she was obviously a previous partner in the business and managed it since 2004. So I'm assuming with a bed and breakfast, she either lived there or lived very nearby especially if she was that involved for that many years. Um, it was at 1.45 p.m. August 25th when it was posted, so literally just a couple of days ago. Um, friends started liking the post. They started talking amongst each other. Family started talking, saying, hey, did you see, like, somebody posted from her account? Like, they made it to look like her. So Chip Coffee did respond, and Chip Coffee said, my reaction when I saw the post was, what the F? He wrote that as Psychic Medium and Kindred Spirits. Um, a, a researcher for the Bordens named Stefani Corey, um, who is also New Wilmer personally, said, this is not right. Whoever you are, please stop this. Um, also said, wrote Rebecca Pittman, who's another author of another Lizzie Borden story or uh, book, it said, if I saw something like this posted by my loved one who had passed away, I would find it extremely painful and insensitive. Um, another tour guide said, oh my God, stop this. And then somebody else said, this is beyond a sick joke and disgusting. And it just goes on and on. So essentially, um, some media outlets did reach out to Lizzie Borden and ask them directly if they posted it. Of course, Lizzie Borden, the new management, denied it. Yeah. What's well, your take? Their, their response was cold on that. So his name is Jared Robinson. I tried to look him up because I think the paranormal group that purchased Lizzie Borden called U.S. Ghost Adventures, which is weird. What? Weird. Yeah, like literally their name is U.S. Wait a second. Ghost how is how did they not get copyrighted for that? I, I have with the U.S. in the beginning. I have no idea. Like wow. The, like, yeah, and I don't know Jared's affiliation with them, um, but he and quoted said unfortunately i have no idea who posted it however i'd be happy to ask the staff here if they know anything about it oh they um, this is they're gonna get sued if somebody finds out if zach finds out about this they're gonna get uh, sued so if you yeah. i just looked it up it's us go like us literally like united states just us ghostadventures.com and it pops up lizzie borden 129th anniversary i can bet you money that that's not trademarked or copyrighted i know for a fact zach has ghost adventures trademarked and copyrighted and if he finds out, they can get sued so bad for that, for promoting that. So that's a big, I did not know that. Yeah, and like, they really had it down lock and key too. It's very vague. They don't have anybody named, like listed on the website because I tried to look for Jared Robinson. And um, apparently that quote was him responding to an email inquiring if like, you know, someone from the house had posted on Wilbur's account. Right. And then he ended it saying, I could imagine that being overwhelming and upsetting for her family. And I just felt like that was just such a base comment mm -hmm. of just like, yeah, well, I can imagine that can be like uncomfortable. And it's like, then figure it out because y'all are going to be in some trouble if you don't. So it says that, U.S. That Ghost wild. Adventures. It says they own 33 locations nationwide of haunted lo locations coast to coast. I cannot believe they haven't been busted for this yet. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's that crazy? shocking. That would be like someone putting U.S. Ghost Girl Diaries. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. that's a problem. Hard so fast. it says 10,000 screams delivered, hauntings coast to coast, 33 locations. We offer ghost adventures verbatim from San Fran to Miami and everything in between. So they know they're trying to bank off, they're piggybacking off of Zach. So if anybody Googles ghost adventures, their website's going to pop up. Ooh, people like this make me want to vom, honestly. Well, and, and that's why it was so hard to find information on them. And I almost wonder if they are, like, doing that purposely. 
They do. Yeah. You know, like that, that seemed a little intentional. This is sketch. So anyway, going, I'm sorry, I'm like ranting because I'm pissed off. Now, if you go back to our actual top topic right now, which is somebody posted from the dead manager's account at Lizzie Borden. I, I'm, I, I'm disgusted, honestly. I, I mean, who else would it have been? It had to have been someone involved with Lizzie Borden currently. And I think that's disgusting. I think it's gross. And what did I say on Twitter? I said, does this call for a boycott? Boycotting Lizzie Borden, boycotting U.S. Ghost Adventures. So they are going to literally make millions of dollars off of us, paranormal fans, going around to their locations and obviously famously haunted locations, yet they're going to mock the dead while they're, like, making a profit off of it? That makes me pretty much sick, honestly. Yeah, Amy, Amy said the same thing, too, because she was like, you know, usually when the account of, like, a loved one who's passed on, you know, if it gets hacked... It's usually by bots trying to, like, scam people out of money. Yeah. But she was like, this is an actual human somewhere, and it's just gross. Yep. Like, I think she even quoted, she said gross, and then posted it on Facebook. Um, messed up. It's disgusting. And yeah. And they bought him of it soon. Well, because I'm sure that it will get back to Zach from this uh, podcast that somebody has ripped him off at usghostadventures.com. So I'll just let them take care of it from here, because that's heinous to also piggyback off of him that's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous anyway what a mess um do i want to deal with them not really to be honest i think that's gross i think if you have no respect for the dead then you have no reason to be in this business that's my opinion amen to that so my god that's shocking did not know that did not know that Mm -hmm. yeah i was so confused when it was announced that they purchased the lizzie borden house because i was like oh ghost adventures bought it and there was a lot of confusion on that. There was a lot of confusion on that here in the East Coast because we were like, oh my gosh, like that's weird. Ghost mm-hmm. Adventures bought Haunted Location. And then it was like, no, it's U.S. Ghost Adventures. And I'm like, that sounds a little suspicious. I know what saying. you're doing, you little manipulators, yeah. you. You know what I mean? You're not getting by anybody, especially now. Oh, now know? it's out there. So bask in it, you know what I mean? I feel like universe people that do... It's true. If you if you put out bad into the world, the universe will repay the karmatic debt anyways. So not even worried about it. Um, so now we're going to move into our actual topic, which is haunted dolls. So it's inter- the reason I wanted to do this topic was a few reasons. One being... I've actually seen a lot of skeptics on TikTok. Make sure you're following us on TikTok, by the way. We have Woo. a couple thousand followers going. Woohoo! We're so excited. Exciting. Yeah, I need to I need to post more on there. I'm hoping I'll be able to do that this week. Um, but there's some skeptics on TikTok who do not believe items can become occupied by a spirit. And I was like, is it because you've never experienced an item being haunted or do you really not believe an object can become haunted and like I've even seen people talking about like Zach's museum being like oh like everything's just a fake and fraud in there and I don't agree with that honestly I don't so how do you feel about haunted objects first um you know I believe it I believe it 100% I believe that you know energy and entities can create their home anywhere Mm -hmm. literally anywhere and if that's a doll so be it and clearly you know especially at Zach's museum and any other crazily haunted doll that we have experienced or read about um they're very comfortable entities are very comfortable and (sighs) like you've said too like especially at Zach's museum think about the the divic box for example Mm -hmm. it's the energy likes that room Mm -hmm. it will reside in that room it is a part of that room now so yeah I I 100% believe an entity can inhabit a doll 100% but the misconception I think is this does the energy shrink down to be the size of that doll and is it hanging out in plastic all day no not necessarily I don't I think that's actually kind of a ridiculous theory but if something was attached to that doll or maybe like their child died and like that doll reminded them of that child and they're going to stay with that doll forever, doesn't necessarily mean they're inside the doll. Now, obviously, the Dybbuk box is different. I think it was designed to put energies inside. So that's that's a different topic. But like even the did you ever watch episodes of The Haunted Collector? Yes. 
So I, I'm a mixed bag about that because he's like the Warren's nephew or grand nephew or something like that. I can't remember. Um, yeah. John's office. So on one side, mm-hmm. yes, I do believe that energies can attach themselves to items. On the other side, with the haunted collector, I really feel like he was scamming people. And just like, Please. like, oh, this is an ancient Egyptian artifact. I have to take it to my museum. What? Like, that belongs in a, mu- a real museum, first of all. And second of all, yes, of course it's haunted. It's from Egypt, thousands of years old. You know what I mean? would be messing with that. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right. right. I love ancient Egypt, but that stuff's just like, woo, gosh darn it. That's a whole other world. <laughs> gosh <itself>. darn it. But, <laughs> but, you know, I also just feel like... Um, John has such an energy, like him and Tony, like oh, their energy. God. Really, I feel like they're like energies the same, and that just freaks me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> really bad. So that's for another stream, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Tony Sparrow is who yeah. she's talking about. So yeah, I think that anybody in that family, other than the daughter, because I don't find Judy to be that way. Oh my gosh, but she's so sweet. She is very authentic, but I think anybody else is totally piggybacking off the wealth of the Warrens, and it, the whole thing is gross. I agree. Um, Make your own name. Make your, you know what I mean? Like, can antiques be haunted? Yes. Can antique stores be haunted? Absolutely. Um, so when people, when I saw this on TikTok, I was like, this is interesting. Because I really, because I know we know the normal, you know, haunts of like Peggy the Doll, the Dybbuk Box, um, Annabelle. Um, what's another one? Uh, Robert the Dolls Robert in Florida. The doll. Yep. Ooh, that's creepy. So yeah. we, we know the big ones, but like, what do you guys think? I'd love to hear comments below. Do you think an item can become, I don't want to say possessed, because that's not the right word, but like, take ownership over an item and become attached to it. I mean, I think, why wouldn't it happen? They like, can, enter, can entities create their home within the space of a doll? Right. Essentially. You know, like, can they inhabit? Well, and if you say no, then how do you explain, like, having Charles Manson's ashes on a painting and you're going to tell me that Charles Manson still is not attached to that because it's uh, his actual remains? Yeah. It's the same thing, just a different item. You know what I mean? I went to, um, I investigated this, uh, what would you, I don't want to call it, like, um, I guess it was a retirement community. But, you know, people sometimes die alone, sadly, and they don't have any family around them. And what what would happen is it was kind of like a, um, assisted living in a way, but like independent living. And if nobody came to collect the belongings um, within the first seven days, the state of Colorado required the this location to place their, the deceased belongings in the basement. Now, first of all, when I say that, I'm not talking like, oh, yeah, their hairbrush and shit. Like, I'm talking like your, their sofa, like everything they own, their clothing, everything they owned was placed in this basement, which was very strange. It was, it was like eight stories down. So basically, they were having a lot of energy in this basement area, and they asked me to come in and investigate, and I did. Um, the short version video of it is on our YouTube channel. I think it's literally like a five or a seven minute video and it's called like um, undisclosed Denver location or something like that. So you can watch it. So we went down there to investigate because th- the owner and the manager were basically like, should we be afraid? Should we be scared of this location? And I, we went down and honestly what it ended up being was like a bunch of dead people pissed that their shit was hanging out in a basement. You know what I mean? Like they were attached to their belongings. They were not going to leave. Who knows what causes you to get stuck in the gray zone? Do, do you die so fast you don't know you're dead? It could be a slew of different things. You don't, maybe you're having mental health issues and you can't get back to your body. Like who knows? But True. that was the moment, my defining moment when I realized absolutely energy can be attached to items because I walked in that room and I couldn't even investigate in the room I just started crying and it was this deep emotional pain of empathetic sadness of like why is my shit down here you know what I mean like like my shit's being stored in this basement like why why is my couch eight like they literally didn't know why so I I think that like people need to stop looking at it I wish people looked at it not as objectively of like, oh, it's just an item somebody owned. But like that was a human being that was once here. 
it's not even like balancing out the thought of the haunt. Is it haunted or is it not haunted? Is something attached to the item or is it not? That item belonged to somebody at some point. They were at one point as real as Kat and I. Why wouldn't it be, why couldn't the item be haunted? You know what I mean? Now, dolls is a whole nother story. I was really interested in chatting with you because you were, you brought up, this was, I know we're kind of jumping ahead, which is fine. Um, but we were talking about Island of the Dolls. Mm -hmm. And my question for you that day was, because of your Mexican heritage, mm -hmm. Hispanic heritage, how do yeah. you feel about the Island of the Dolls and this person saying they found this little girl dead and that to keep her, keep her spirit away and like keep her happy he hung thousands of dolls all over how do you feel like do you think that relates to your heritage that's i wanted to know i was genuinely curious to be honest especially with the unfortunate way that julian ended up passing away literally the same way as the girl and that but, was the guy that yeah. like owned the island yeah, he was the one that was also, he was the one that found the girl, and he was the one that um, hung up all the dolls mm -hmm. on the wall. Um, I, I can't tell you how many different um, paranormal shows I've seen investigate there, and I feel this sense, and I don't know if it is because of my Mexican heritage, my Hispanic heritage, but I feel this overwhelming sense of... Um, like I don't like I don't need that. Like I almost feel like someone saying like Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And getting agitated um, to like try to help when they don't like want help mm -hmm. is kind of the energy that I I always feel when I look at pictures or when I see people you know investigate there. And I'll be honest, like I think that the the girl does reside there still, mm -hmm. but I think she just wants to be left alone. Mm -hmm. I think that that was really traumatic for her, and. Um, you know, Hispanic heritage, especially on the Brujeria side, um, is very spiritual and very serious about ancestry, um, as would really any culture, mm -hmm. but with Hispanic culture especially. And um, I think that she is literally still processing like mm -hmm. what happened and is not ready to cross over. And I think that having somebody kind of like, even if it was out of the goodness of his heart to put those dolls up, to have some form of comfort, I think she was just like, leave me alone you Why know you and especially that? it's getting really dark and I think it has started to affect him because she's like stop you know the energy was very much like stop and then there's like severed limbs like being hung and like decapitated heads and like really grotesque dolls so it's almost like it just kept getting darker and darker because this guy wasn't getting the hint well and my um, question to you too was just because once again your heritage because I would want to be asked if it was related to the Native American side but mm -hmm. what at what point do you see this happening? Like, cause we know that to get to the island of the dolls, it's very remote. You have to take like a little squishy boat out to the middle of nowhere, surrounded by water. My question to you is at what point is it a mental health question? At what point do we ask, was he mentally well? Because, you know, hanging up a few dolls is one thing, but when you took it as far as he did, you're right. And then he became so obsessed with it. Was it an OCD issue? Was is it a mental health question? Like now we are and in a point where we can talk about mental health openly, and he why yeah. is he taking dolls apart and hanging their arms and limbs and their heads and like several? You're right. What like at what point do we say, are we concerned about the girl's spirit being here or what was wrong? What was wrong with him? What was he going through that was so traumatizing, that he and then did he manifest his own death to end up being just like hers? It's true. It's true. I think it was a mixed bag of both. I think whatever she was going through, she's still processing that and her agitation. I think that he's processing or was processing trauma of finding a dead body in the water. True. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he had processed that. And I think there was a, a sense of guilt coming from him of not being able to save her. And that was his way of like giving an offering you know, to try to appease her or say... Now, is that brujeria? Yes, that would be considered brujeria. So he was... You would essentially say he was practicing witchcraft to keep the, quote, evil spirits away by hanging up uh, things to be in lieu of the ancestors. I think unknowingly, yes. Um, and, it, and it took a dark turn. It took a dark turn, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, which, bru which brujeria can be 
some people claim. I think all magic can be considered dark at some point or another. Yep. But mm -hmm. was he alone on the island? Like, it is sad. You know, like, he's alone on this island. He found a dead body. Like, it is sad. You know, especially a child, innocent child. But it is yeah. crazy to me he left it up there, and it's even still up there because the part that I think, <laughs> I guess this is going to be a really girly response, but mm -hmm. I've seen so many, you know, shows where they've gone to the island of the dolls. Um, but those dolls are infested with bugs and spider eggs and spiders because it was cotton. It was like, it essentially became a breeding ground for insects. So that's the part that like freaks me out and grosses me out too is like, but now with Brujeria, do you think the reason they haven't been removed is because it's sort of become a shrine and you're no not to remove it now, right? When you give the intention, especially when it comes to ancestry, because that's something that I use in my practice with my um, Spanish tarot cards when I'm wanting to commune with my spirit guides or like my ancestors, my Hispanic ancestors, um, when you give an offering, you don't take it back. It's it's there. Mm -hmm. Like, don't touch it. Um, that's theirs, whether they wanted it or not. I just heard something. But my question is, why um, hasn't this been explained through other shows? I, um... They're scared to talk about the brujeria slash witchcraft I, side? I think that, and I think the Hispanic culture and getting it right is really important. And it's really hard to mesh together brujeria and Latin culture um, together in an accurate sense because a lot of Hispanic culture now is very Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's why it's kind of like you, you avoid it. But the island itself, um, Muñecas, I believe it's called, Isla de, de la Muñecas, is like a hot spot I think it's a portal I think it's a portal because it's literally in like a swampy area um, and it's, it's energy in itself even without that situation happening with that poor girl is just like dark it's heavy so how do you someone asked do we think possession was a culprit related to him uh, being so upset like was he possessed by the little girl essentially I, th I think um, it's still related to brujeria personally I do too I mean they were, he was claiming that he was haunted by the little girl um so if anything i think it was paranoia mm -hmm. to be quite honest and and finding a dead body i mean how would you respond to that well yeah you know i mean I, you, yeah shock, i mean ptsd shock. you found a dead little girl and that, uh, floating and yeah and nobody like he only had himself in the island and he just kept being drawn back there and back mm -hmm. there and back there i mean it was an, it's literally insanity when you keep doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result and, and it just... Well, and you, end when you go through trauma, and I mean, everybody's been through trauma, but I mean, that's some trauma. It does yeah. strange things to your brain that they literally don't... Like, I mean, I, I know because I was in a relationship with a soldier for eight years in, who deployed to both Afghanistan and Iraq. And when you experience trauma with your brain, you're, they don't even know how to explain what happens because the, you have experienced such trauma things that you really shouldn't see or experience as a human and did he try to pull her out of the water and like re probably tried to revive her or something I mean your your brain would think automatically you see someone drowning or floating pull them out try to revive them then you can't now you're stuck with a dead body for how long she'd been in the, the water we don't know Maybe she was starting to rot in the water that was probably traumatic to see skin rotting I mean you got to think about really in-depth critical thinking about what surrounded this and it probably did mess him up and if he was being haunted by her or not could have been trauma ptsd images that he kept seeing thinking she was haunting him or having nightmares it was probably both could have been both related with trauma now do i think the island is haunted 100 percent i've seen it is i've had to have i've seen shit move on the ghost adventures went there I can't remember if Ghost Hunters went there. I know I've seen every episode of it, but you're right. I agree. Do I think it's the little girl like making the noises and the the things moving? No, I think when you have, like Cat said, essentially a an offering and a mini. <laughs> I'm trying to. I was trying to think of a word for plural. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's offerings. literally thousands of offerings of, like, of vessels, I guess, is a great way to put it. Well, and it's crazy, because you think about, like, when you, you give something to someone, right? Or, like, when you're giving an offering on the craft path or in Brujeria or any craft practice, 
you're giving something with an intention behind it that creates energy in itself mm -hmm. now even if your intention is good if there's a dark force there or a not so good entity there that can morph into something else unfortunately like it's we don't really have control over that but this was over 50 years mm -hmm. that he was putting these dolls in this area mm -hmm. 50 years mm -hmm. i mean craziness mm -hmm. craziness so well yeah after I'm, 10 years the dolls that were already there even if it was 10 of them they would have been rotten by then oh yeah mm-hmm so now you're thinking of that many. But yeah, you have these empty vessels, essentially, that are sitting there where Kat says now it's a portal. Um, somebody asked, do you think Latin people are super, are very superstitious? Very. Uh, those that don't practice brujería or curandera, because there's two different. So curandera is a part of the craft practice that's more of like the white, uh, like good magic. Good, good witch. No, I was going to say white magic, but I didn't mean it like that. I right. meant like you know, good magic. You didn't mean white people um, like me. No, I'm just right. kidding. That's what I meant. That's what I, that's what I was trying to say. Um, but, you know, and they're energy healers. So they work with energy. They work with plants. Very much like you think of, like, the green witch vibes. Right. That's Kudendeva. Mm -hmm. Then you have Bluhedia, which is, like, a step further where you really start to incorporate, like, you know, deeper craft practices and working with, you know, everything else in ancestry and spiritual spirituality. Offerings. And spirit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um... And those two can sometimes get really confused, um, but it's so why? It's here's another question: Is superstition involved too? Why is publicly, especially like most recently, I can think of Ghost Adventures did an episode about brujería, and it's always presented as black magic, and that is not the case. No. Why? No. Why is it presented that way? It's like it's like Salem, which is like you say, I practice witchcraft and suddenly burn me at the stake, and and you're like putting hexes on people. Yeah, I mean, I, a large portion of uh, Latinx community is very Catholic. Um, and I think that there's just a fear. I think it's just like we, you know, Americans, right, would have that fear if you're Catholic and you're practicing witchcraft. They think it's dark magic and you sold your soul to the devil. Right. It's like that, but within this Hispanic community, they think it's just like, it's just bad. Mm -hmm. It's all bad. Um, so if you get like a sign bad. and it's somehow negative, it's bad and it's superstition and it's just bad and like be careful basically i think i think curandera has more um respect than brujeria because um curandera is kind of uh, used as a form of like energy healing so it's almost like modern day reiki but with herbs and oils and natural substances like shamanism with native americans Mm hmm absolutely but brujeria when you add the the spirit and like communicating with the other side aspect to it that's very scary but i find that very interesting though because a lot of catholics within the latinx community practice and celebrate dia de los muertos mm -hmm. where they go and leave offerings for their ancestors and they bake you know pan de muerto which is you know bread of the dead mm -hmm. and they go and spend an evening in the graveyard um, with their ancestors mm -hmm. so you know, that is also part of brujería, whether they believe it or not, but it's the same as here in our culture, mm -hmm. where you put a star on top of your Christmas tree, like you've talked about. Pagan. Mm -hmm. that, that's paganism, mm -hmm. exactly. Like, you know, so it's it's pretty much the same thing, but just within a different culture. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. like with uh, particularly the Navajo. So there's obviously lots of different tribes of um, Native American, I, indigenous uh, uh, Cherokee. So my Cherokee ancestors mm -hmm. practice things much different from the Navajo. But I have a, yeah. a really good friend named Tori who's Navajo, and she, um, they believe the skinwalker um, is essentially, not just anyone can become a skinwalker, it has to be a uh, burdened or angry or unlucky shaman, um, or sometimes druid, depending on where you're practicing. And basically the shaman, um, they do consider a witch, but a, but a doctor healing witch within the tribe. And then that shaman somehow did bad and turned to the dark side. And that shaman has now become the skinwalker who lures people in to, like, kill them or feed on them or whatever um, and because of their dark magic. So it's this, I get it. Because people realize, people don't realize with indigenous tribes, with my tribe, it's completely different than the Navajo. They're not all going to be the same. They're not going to all practice the th same spiritual beliefs. They're, not, they're definitely not going to have the same rituals for sure. Um, and people don't realize that shamans can sometimes be seen as dark or witches because they were the healers of the tribe. And you, in question, 
they're practicing magic to essentially heal you with like what you said with herbs and greenery and all the same thing so people don't realize it so okay so someone also asked another question saying um do you think that because of his trauma that it led him to pass um the same way as she did because he was so traumatized by it that's hard that's a hard question I'm, I can, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a right answer here, but I will say that I think everything we do in our life is pre-planned. I don't think anything's a coincidence. I think that we plan everything in our life path before we come here, good and bad, as hard as that is for some people to swallow. Because if it's even the bad stuff, you have things to learn from it, and the good stuff, you have things to learn from it. And maybe he was intuitive. I mean, I'm not questioning him being spiritual because he was doing all this for 50 years. But maybe he had a sense he was going to die similar and he saw that in a way of trying to ward it off by, by hanging these dolls. You know, like there's no coincidence that he found a child dead like that, obsessed over it for 50 years and then turned around and died the same way. That's not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. No, I have a theory that when he, obviously, I mean, finding a dead body in the water, no one wants to find that. Mm -hmm. I think there might have been something intuitively that struck him as maybe familiar. Mm -hmm. um, and that led him into a panic of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to avoid this at all costs, and then it ends up happening. Well, maybe the lesson what's in for him, as dark as it sounds, was to find the dead body and to either spiritually grow from it or succumb to his trauma, which essentially I think is what he did. As sad as it is. But now let's let's talk about the island and like you said there's a portal and like you said or like I said there was ves empty vessels. So do you think empty vessels like that, especially in the form of a being, and what I'm saying being is, you know, let's let's take this thumbtack box, for example, okay? Do you think an energy would rather inhabit this thumbtack box or inhabit a doll that looks closest to being a human? Oh, absolutely. Probably the doll, right? Like, probably the doll. I mean, doll. it won't mess with the thumbtack box, okay? Right. I'm just saying. But absolutely the doll. Absolutely it's the doll. It's familiar. Mm-hmm. Now, you're also going to start mixing in other things here, and if you're talking about a portal being there, I've never been there, so I don't know. I agree with Kat. I think that the energy there is very strange. Um, I'd love to go there, but the thought of trying to get, like, a little boat out to the middle of nowhere island with all the film equipment, that sounds like something I do not want to combat, to be honest with you, because you're talking about taking an entire film crew along with 100 bags full of equipment, the, the equipment is not lightweight and you have nowhere to charge your equipment you'd have to probably take some sort of generator with you or two of them for backups and, and now you're talking about combating the elements it could rain the flies the insects the mosquitoes like that I, I don't do outdoor locations because it's a pain um, and yeah, it's really dangerous out there it is it's dangerous in the wind and wild wildlife and how many boats do you have to take with all your equipment? Because you could sink a boat easily with film equipment. You know? So anyway, yeah, that's my tea on that. But the people that have gone, it does make you wonder, is there a portal? And they know that it's secluded. But then you could start incorporating things outer worldly, like, I don't know, fairies, gnome beings. And I feel like things like fairies and gnomes would be very in tune to finding a bunch of little dolls hanging from a tree on an abandoned island because they can sort of run the island themselves. You look at places like Scotland or Ireland, they believe so much. I'm very Irish and so is Kat, and I'm also Scottish. You go to these places and you even can look it up online. They believe so much in the lore of gnomes fairies all that stuff they will build highways around or over forests so that it does not affect the fairies and make them angry so you're gonna tell me that a country or two countries that are much older than the united states but have believed in this for how many hundreds of years to the point where they literally will not disrupt the forest 
why wouldn't something like that want to inhabit in a doll's body? True. Like, to me, that makes the most sense. You know what I mean? Like, so the question for everybody is, do you think he's still around? Do you think she's still around? I don't know. I haven't been there. I haven't felt the energy. But do I think other creatures and beings have inhabited those? For sure. Do you think it's more than one thing? I do. Oh, yeah. Someone left a comment that's really interesting. There's a reference that during the Mexican Revolution, dead bodies were dumped in the canal. That could be as well. Yeah. I'd love to do more digging on that for maybe a future stream or something, Mm -hmm. just to find out more, because um, it's really interesting with um, Spanish lore and, like, the history of things like that because it's very cryptic mm-hmm. there's not many stories that you find that you can like easily find on google it's always by like word of mouth and yep. very family and close-knit oriented so i'd love to do some more digging and for a out. reason though usually especially it's like you know oh. same with my cherokee culture it's like mm-hmm. this stays in the tribe and you don't share it period mm-hmm. that's why yeah. like i cringe so hard on social media when i see people like i'm learning to become a shaman and i'm like you don't get to choose to be a shaman. You're chosen from the tribe, period. And you're put through, like, a lot of tests to do it. And you can't read a book and say, I'm going to become a shaman. That's not how it works. You know what I mean? Well, and the same thing with Buddha You know, if you you are practicing Buha, Buho, that does not mean that you are practicing black magic mm-hmm. or dark magic, you know? Because um, I can't remember. I think I made a post once talking about it and, you know, just learning about it expanding my knowledge with my Hispanic heritage and on the craft path. And someone was like, oh, isn't that dark magic? Isn't that evil? I'm like, well, no. Everything, I guess, is evil to an extent, if that's your intention. You know? <laughs> Catholic uh, Church. <coughs> how much money a year did they... Up. Yeah, how much money a year does the Catholic Church make off of donations? And they use it for the pedophilia that's going on behind the scenes for their attorneys? Uh, you want to talk about black magic? There you go. We won't even talk about the most recent one, okay? We're I haven't done. heard. Oh my god, I'll get no, triggered. No, no, no. Nope, don't. Yeah, everyone gets mad at the billionaires who are making money, like Elon Musk and, um, uh, what's, Bezos. Mm. Yet, they're not looking at the Catholic Church, who's literally bringing in millions and millions and millions of people's money, and it's never going to the people. It could literally cure world hunger. And nobody wants to blame the Catholic Church, because they're a non-profit, and they're there to pray and help God, and baby Jesus, and all this stuff. It's like, okay. Maybe you should be pointing the finger at the right people. You know what I'm saying? True. I mean, nothing against Jesus, but it's the people that run it. It's people that run it, okay? Don't tell me otherwise. I don't like organized religion. Don't get me on that rant, because you will. I will stand on a soapbox, and you will not get me off of it. <laughs> yep. Right there with you. With hey. the mega- yeah. Literally. Hey. <laughs> well, and there's light and dark with everything, though. Like, even just with the church... I'm not saying everybody in the Catholic Church is bad, but there's plenty of bad ones to, like, make it balanced out, which is just like witchcraft, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I just need to breathe. I get really worked up with stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it's going to be fine. Yeah, I know, I get hot, I need a fan, I need, like, I need a fan. Um... (sighs) She's, someone said, I love Amazon. Amen. I couldn't live without Amazon. Even though I think it's ridiculous that Bezos just went in a rocket to fall back down to earth. But you know what? If yeah. you were a billionaire, you would probably do it too. So just let it go to Jesus. You know what I mean? That's true. <laughs> um, someone wrote, I can only imagine the crazy things you'd see if there was a 24-7 live stream of that island. I'm telling you true. right now, based off of the humidity itself, with that area being just surrounded by water, it's probably going to shut off within, like, the first 20 minutes. That's true. Because of how hot it gets Oh, yeah, there's no outlet, okay? You'd have to have some sort of a generator, which is my other concern (laughs) with going to somewhere like that. Look, okay, if I see a floating doll head within those those 20 minutes and then the camera shuts off, maybe. Maybe, but... I I did an outdoor location, a big one, one time in Colorado, and... I mean, I had a camera tech that fell down the mountainside and almost slid into a river. <sighs> yeah, Kat's like, I don't want to fall in a river, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, 
I did, and then there was a mountain lion. There was a mountain lion that was stalking us. They don't usually like attack, but if they if you're like close to their nest and they have babies or they feel threatened, like they'll attack. And I'm talking when it's pitch black, you're in the middle of nowhere. There's no lights. Like there's no gener there's no street lights to you know what I mean? And like having a flashback to the pilot. <laughs> then we got to this there were three haunted tunnels that we were going to investigate. We got to the third one and there were people the trek, to, I'm talking miles into the middle of nowhere because they'd shut these tunnels down. They were haunted and they had like trauma. Little kids died in buses. Anyway, um, we finally got to the third tunnel and I'm like, who, no one's going to be out here. It's literally like four or five miles in the pitch black. We get there and there's these people just having a party in the middle of nowhere in this tunnel, drinking and doing drugs. I'm like, y'all are going to fall down this mountain and die. And they're shooting guns off inside the tunnel and I'm waiting for one to ricochet and just hit my camera tech in the head. So outdoor locations suck royally for so many reasons. You can't see a mountain lion or a moose come in to run you over. You know what I mean? And it's oh scary. Gosh, a moose? Yeah. They have those um, in Colorado. We have them everywhere. They have them here too. Yeah. You have Ooh. to be careful, man. They will, they will step on your car and that'll be the end of it. Like those, those are no joke. Those, and those, when they're an adult, they are gigantic. Anyway. They're right. huge. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah, they're Both dangerous. Both people going down. Okay, the we, moose and the person. We almost hit a deer once by accident. They have deer whistles in Colorado, thank God, so there's not a lot of dead deer everywhere. Pennsylvania is horrible, my God. Um, there's dead deer oh every five God. feet. It's fucking horrible. So sad. It is. Oh it God. makes me sick because it's so many. So we have deer oh. whistles, but we almost hit one driving one night. I was going to Central City with my ex, and he had, like, a brand-new Mustang GT and we just missed a deer, and I mean, it would have killed us, probably. It would have killed us, so, They yeah. jump out, out of nowhere sometimes, and mm -hmm. you're like, ah, it's trying to stop, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I haven't hit one, thank God, I don't want to, your, your, oh. I've known people in Colorado, their car is just absolutely totaled, absolutely totally totaled. totaled. Yeah. I know someone that that happened to, yeah. And, and most of the time, the deer is okay, honestly. Like, most of the time, the deer makes it, because they're so massive, but Pennsylvania, oh my God. Jesus, they need somebody Maybe needs to make somebody needs to use their tax dollars to put whistles up because it's it's a morbid. I hate driving through. Oh. It is, isn't it morbid? Yeah. I yep. it's gross. I you I mean mutilated. Oh God, I can't look. Oh. One state I said I'd never go back to, and I meant it. Um, started on the does. Okay, that's sad. Mm -mm. that's sad. It is for an empath. It's horrible. All right. Robert the doll, let's start with him. So he started in Germany, and he's still chilling now. He's down in Florida, right? <laughs> yes. He's just still going, you know what I mean? <laughs> still going, his little sailor outfit. I know, he doesn't look scary to me. And, like, there's been people online, because I've had people message me that were like, I didn't take it serious, and I went to Florida, and I saw Robert the doll, and, like, I talked smack to his picture. And I'm like, he's not ugly. Like, why would you talk smack to him? You know what I mean? He's actually kind of cute. He is kind of cute. I don't think, but you know, as a girl, did you have dolls growing up? I, yeah, I did have American Girl dolls, and I was a Barbie. Person. Oh, you were bougie. Yeah. I was clearly I love, I love, lower middle class, so I did not have American. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, I had like the hand-me-down American doll. I never got them brand new. Yeah, I don't even think American doll was in Colorado, to be honest with you, but um, not oh, till really? later. Yeah. Um, nobody wants to come out there because it's just mountains in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> at least you're, well, no, you're New England. Like everything's in New England. You know what I mean? But I guess that's fair. I did have dolls. I had a lot of dolls. I was, I loved dolls. I had, there were two twin dolls I had, um, that I had like a baby stroller for. Did I ever think that they were haunted? No, I don't, I'm not, I'm, are you afraid of dolls? Let's ask that. I'm not afraid of dolls. No. Even the haunted ones, I'm not afraid of dolls. I don't think anything should be disrespected, though. You know what I mean? It's true. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I walk into a, an antique store and see a creepy-ass-looking doll, it's creepy, mm -hmm. but I'm not scared of it. Right. I mean, it's just got a weird vibe. What did you think of Peggy? Because you, you went in there, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Peggy? Peggy's interesting. Peggy's interesting because mm -hmm. I think she knows the effect that she has on people. Uh-huh. And I definitely didn't mess with it. I didn't mess with Do it. Do you I think she's better. demonic? I don't. Me neither. 
I don't. Mm -mm. I think I think she likes giving people a heart attack. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like malevolent. Literal, yeah, malevolent. But, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And she feeds off of that. I do. Yeah, because she loves fear. It's true because, like, if you've read some of the um, some of uh, some of what people have said about her and like <laughs> with her. Sorry, I'm like Some, no, somebody said inside. Robert the doll's so cute. Somehow fitting for Florida, and I, I'm sorry, I just <laughs> sorry. Oh gosh, Woo! Just no politics, guys. I'm just gonna straighten up for a second, okay? It's fine. Okay, yeah, we're gonna. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was good. Um, you win the comment was, for the night. It was good. Yes, comment winner. Ah. Um, when you read some of the claims from of people that have experienced Peggy, they are very specific in saying like she does give off really intense energy, especially mm -hmm. if you go into the location, one ex like ready to experience it. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you put up the boundary to say stop, Peggy, she stops. Mm -hmm. I feel like a demon wouldn't do that. Right. You know what I mean? So maybe that's just my only take. Yeah, I don't... I've never been attacked by her or anything. Um, I don't think she's demonic. I just think... I think she likes power. I think she's power hungry. I think yeah. she likes anybody... I think she. if you go in with a group of people, they usually only send in like five to seven people at a time. But I think that... Um, out of a group of five or six people, especially if it's a malevolent energy, it can tell who's the most scared. Why? Because we give off electromagnetic fields when we're scared, when we're shouting, when we're mad. And if you go in calm, you're not giving off EMF. So she's looking for the person who's giving off the most EMF so that she can manifest and do something to that person or call them out or cuss them out. So absolutely, I agree 100%. Um, she's big. Yeah. Like, she's a big doll. Mm -hmm. I never, like, tall. Mm-hmm. But I was not expecting her to be that tall based off of photos. Yeah, I think she's like a 1950s doll or something like that, I think. Because I remember mm -hmm. my mom having a doll that looked sort of similar to her. But Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Robert the doll. So he started in Germany. He was made in 1904. Um, he was bought by the grandfather of Robert Eugene Otto as a gift from the overseas. Um, and he was named after the little boy. The sailor outfit is what made him an iconic figure in paranormal um and now he basically ruins people's lives if you talk smack to him or about him essentially yeah there were also claims that people could hear loud giggling and like his rocking chair would move and you could hear footsteps now i cannot comment and say if i know if he's demonic or not because i haven't been in the presence of the doll um, you can definitely tell the difference, though, I'll say that. Like, that's why I get so annoyed with so many demon shows, because it's rare. It's very... It, it happens, but, like, when, you, when you're when you around that kind of a haunt... Have you been around... You've, you've been around Annabelle. Annabelle, man. It, it is. Ooh. You don't... You cannot miss it. Like, if you're around something that's serious, like, actually demonic, you'll never forget the feeling. And I told you that before you went there. Yeah. We, and we had the conjuring mirror there too. Mm -hmm. We had the double whammy. But it, it is—it's something that's not you. It's not like Peggy, where you just mosey on in there. You know what I mean? Like it—it it makes an actual effect in the whole energy field, like within the room. So, in my opinion, do I think Robert the doll is demonic? No. Is he malevolent? He probably feeds off people's fears. Also, do, can people manifest their own karma? One hundred percent. If you go into Robert the doll's room and you talk smack to him. There might be a portion of you that walks out with a guilty conscience thinking, I probably shouldn't have done that. And then if your life falls apart, you probably manifested it. True. But isn't Robert the doll the one that people have, like, sent mail, like, apologizing to Robert and they ask, like, the owners to read the mail? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. Just don't disrespect the dead, period, and you won't have to write a damn letter. I feel like that's the easy answer, okay? Okay, you don't have to send a wax-sealed letter. <laughs> From 19 Robert in a ass outfit and a rocking chair, okay? Oh, my God. He's cute. He's really cute, though. Yeah, he why? is cute. I know. Why would you talk smack? He's cute. I don't think you know, he's ugly. You might want to, like, now I need to crochet a Robert the doll. Oh, my God, you should do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a little sailor outfit. All right, keep an eye out, folks. Okay, oh my I'll god, that would be so cute. I'm like a mini Robert the dog. Do it. Yeah, he's cute. I'm gonna do it anyway, now. I don't I don't find him scary. Like 
Yeah, and you, you know what? If you talk shit to a doll that's that cute, something's wrong with you, okay? You need to go look in the mirror for a minute and be like, what kind of issues do I have to decide to fly to Florida and talk smack to this doll that's very cute, okay? What trauma are you hiding, boo? Okay? <laughs> Don't take it out on Robert. No, I'm just kidding. She's poor Robert. Poor Robert. Okay, Annabelle. Um, now I'm gonna let you cover this because I've never met Annabelle. You got you got the privilege to meet Annabelle in person. Yeah. And you had yeah, some issues obsessing over her for a while. Yeah. Yeah, there were some issues there. So the like summary of Annabelle is um, Annabelle was gifted to Donna, who was a student nurse, and it was gifted to Donna by her mother. And um, Annabelle at first started making like small movements in the home and or they would put her somewhere and then she would be on the bed or, if, or she'd be randomly like in a chair, you know, creepy stuff like that. And then and wasn't her daughter a nurse or was that the second girl that it was gifted to? Don the mother? Yeah. Or was it the mother that was a nurse? I think Donna. Donna was, was in student, student nurse student. student that's student right. Nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the movements so basically like when she was at college in her dorm the the doll was just like making itself at home just chilling in the, in the dorm yeah yeah it was crazy it was crazy and i'm gonna be honest like they ended up hiring um a psychic to see what was going on because um they claimed like they could hear a little girl or there was like you know a little girl crying or something like that and i blame the psychic for maybe creating this problem i agree i am so happy somebody said it yeah no Ugh. she was wrong <laughs> like well like, like really okay wrong. like okay let me say this okay something could have yeah. already been attached to the doll for sure like i agree yeah. do i think it was as bad as it turned out to be no maybe even after the warrens took it it ended up being worse than it was and like something else inhabited that was actually dark so I agree with Kat. I don't think that it was necessarily started out demonic. I think that over time something realized that was a vessel for something else and then eventually was was taken over by said Lucifer, I don't know, whoever the yeah. F is in there. Well, yeah, it's true though. I mean, who really knows? But Annabelle's like really big too. It's a big doll. Yeah, it's she looks like doll. Raggedy Ann, like the real one. She just, yeah, yeah, and like you'll see her hand move like her legs if her legs were crossed they'll go, they'll come uncrossed it's interesting um but after the incident with the psychic saying it's the soul of a girl that died within the home is residing within the doll um and it just wants to feel like love is kind of essentially what Ew. the psychic was yeah gross um, yeah really that, like what you know what i mean like yeah. well after that like weird automatic writing stuff started happening and like notes were variously being like spread throughout the home this is saying, donna's like, me mm -hmm. yeah and then all of a sudden um like the doll was found in her usual spot in the bed but there was like blood on her hands there was blood on annabelle's hands and that's when like some stuff started going down real dark so okay real i want to bring this up just because we have to yes there's a lot of people that say because you know my my aquarius moon brain's like let's play devil's advocate because <laughs> it's my favorite thing to play in the world um mm -hmm. A lot of people say the Warrens were frauds. A lot of people say, which they had some issues. Okay, I'm not going to deny that. We've talked about that We've a few times. about that. Yeah, I don't want to pour into that tea tonight because there's not enough time in the world. But um, <laughs> do you think this was fraudulent? Do you think that um, maybe it was? It started out not as bad till later because they took the doll? Because you, you've been in the presence of it. So, which yeah. not a lot of people have. Like, you're you're one of a very small handful of people that have actually gotten to be, like, sit within inches of Annabelle. So, because of that, I want to take your uh, eyewitness account and credibility of an empath very... I want it to be important. I want people to listen and critically think about it. As far as you know, when you were in presence of it, you do believe it's something extremely dark and definitely demonic. Ew, there, you cut there. out for both of those. She does this every time, you guys. I apologize in advance if some some weird stuff with the technology happens with me. She every really, time. Yeah, she, so she you really think she still has an energetic highway to you? I do. I do. Um, especially after the incident that occurred, after I left the event, and there was an accident that occurred with some other skeptics that were at... Um, the event as well. Mm -hmm. um, there was like a really bad motorcycle accident with these two skeptics um, 
that were in the building that were sitting right behind me, by the way, mm-hmm. and were like, this is just a doll. What are you talking about? This is so stupid. As we're listening to like possessions happening from people, right. because at this time, Tony was telling us a little bit about the legacy of Ed and Lorraine Warren, and we had like inside scoop with the um, tapes of them doing exorcisms and things like that. And I'm like, I swear to God, if something calls me home because of your ignorant butt, I'm going to have some problems with you, okay? I don't think it was because um, of them, but I think it, it went ahead and told No, you. no. They want to like, know, what did she feel like being in her presence, like, specifically? How, how do you describe a demonic haunting? Um, heavy. So, she, she was in her box. They have, like, the Lord's Prayer etched on the back. She's wearing a rosary, and they put holy water on it, like, constantly. Um, they had the box covered in a black tapestry for about two hours. The event was about two and a half hours. And, um, for the last 20 to 30 minutes after we were talking a little bit about the history, as soon as Tony Spera lifted the black tapestry off of Annabelle's, um, case, uh, it was like an energy just like shifted in the entire room. It literally felt like a wave of heavy energy and time slowed down, I guess is really like the best way I can describe it. Any movements you were making, even to stand up, to get a picture with the doll, because I had a picture with her, um, to get up to talk to people, like you felt like you were walking in slow motion. It was almost like walking through molasses, I guess is the best way I can describe it. I felt that same exact way in the Demon House room Mm -hmm. at Zach Bagans Museum, Mm -hmm. which was really the only way for me to kind of like understand that familiar energy already which is why i'm convinced um she does have a a demonic presence to her absolutely Mm -hmm. um everybody in the room also within that first five minutes of the black tapestry being taken off were very loudly complaining of headaches and having migraines and about half of the people um at the convention left within the first five minutes of annabelle's um, tapestry being taken off Mm -hmm. um so she's the real deal guys 100% Um, and the experiences that I had during and then after were startling and since those moments I I always felt like she's just always there every time I mention her Mm -hmm. Um, for sure but I know how to instill the boundaries and take care of that and Crystal was really helpful with that within the first instincts of that oppressive feeling like that light you felt like you were being like heavily oppressed by her for a while Uh, yeah yep 100% like caught off like staring at a wall for for a while um, and not really knowing what was going on very disassociative um, not myself having that same energy at home of like moving really slowly not really being able to move but like my head working at a normal speed if that makes sense Mm -hmm. Um, and I had taken a picture with her and I went out to go and grab a bite to eat with a couple of my friends that went to the convention as well And um, I was apparently obsessing, obsessively looking at the photo I had with Annabelle um, for like 30 minutes. I was like straight up just staring down at my phone, staring at Annabelle. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it until somebody pushed me out of it because it it was just freaky. You weren't engaging in conversation. You were like literally. I I was like, it was like just focused on her. And um, I get like really hot and like goosebumpsy when I talk about it because it was like weird very weird energy but I'm grateful to have experienced it I really am and that was the whole point why I wanted to go was to experience that energy and what that felt like because of being a newbie in paranormal like I want to have that understanding like I want to experience that Mm -hmm. and having experienced that at Zach Bagus Museum as well I was like okay I get it I understand what this feels like now Mm -hmm. and um I posted it onto social media the photo of, of Tony at the time which is now taken down (laughs) <laughs> and the photo with Annabelle and I had deleted them completely off of my phone mm-hmm. a few days after that it took me a while to get out of it out of that energy out of her energy and I probably filmed the YouTube video what like three times crystal I think it was more I tried filming a YouTube video like three or four times maybe even five times and every time I would do it something would happen or they the were computer literally... would shut down like your the file deleted itself like yep. There were also moments of me completely disassociating within my conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, it it was scary, where, like, I would look back on the footage before it would go away, and there was 20 minutes of me just, like, stop talking and just staring. Um, And And movement in your house, you'd hear, like, doors slamming shut. Things would drop. Things would drop. That was me. Sorry. Everyone's like, oh, my God, I heard something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, no, it was in this room um, that, that I was recording it, and... 
yeah, very heavy, very, very heavy energy. But I'm grateful again to like have had the experience because I know when that comes in or if I have that feeling, I know exactly what I need to do now. Like get on it, don't let it sit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Um, so that was an experience in itself for sure. And Tony was very specific, Tony Spera, on um, you know the people that was running that were running this Paracon. Crystal was going to come out as well to come see it, but some things came up. And um, he was very um, explicit in saying, I am not, we are not, like the Warren's Museum is not just a free for all. Like if you want to have Annabelle at your convention, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. He was like, unless you are direct friends or direct family and we trust you, um, you know, you will not be seeing this doll. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was friends with the person whose paranormal group was running the convention and there you go. Like I was able to get in on that experience. Mm -hmm. So really crazy. I don't think the conjuring mirror helped at all, to be totally honest, because it was completely opposite of Annabelle. Oh, I didn't um, know that. So wow. yeah, like they unveiled it at the same time. And I mm. think that was just kind of like a double whammy. <laughs> well, mirrors are honest. portals anyways. So, well, it's that. And like, there was literally an hour straight of just listening to people like being exercised of demons. Like literally, it was just they're like, like, Oh, we're home. This is great. You like, know what I mean? Literally though. Yeah. I'm <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Dark humor, sorry. Dark yeah. humor, but um, yeah, wow, what an experience. And I'll be honest, like, I would see her again. 100%. Mm -hmm. So and you think you have an unhealthy addiction to it now? Uh, it's possible, yes. Uh, because I'm very curious about the energy of it. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've had that experience, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. when I en encounter um, demonic activity, I'm clairsentient. So uh, other people cannot smell the smells that I smell. I know that sounds strange, but sometimes it will be sulfur. But most mm. of the time, I know it's demonic because I smell cinnamon. Ooh, what? Isn't that weird? I think it's my spirit that? guides coming in, like warning me of spicy. You know, oh, hell's here, boo. It's spicy. You smell that Wait, cinnamon. Ew, that... you cut out again. I'm getting like red marks on my chest. Are you really? That? Well, your your name tags in front of you, so you'd have to like sit up a little bit higher. Can you see it? Oh, it's like a rash. Yeah. That's weird. Anyway, it's fine. Get out. It's the cinnamon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's cinnamon. It's I spicy cinnamon. demons. <laughs> um, Demon House. I I saw Demon House when it premiered. Uh, I was in the same theater as Zach. I didn't know he was sitting behind me. Asshole. Didn't say hi until it was over, and he scared the shit out of me. Um, but yeah, that when Demon House premiered in the theater, the theater had all kinds of problems. Uh, the lights were flashing. Uh, the film stopped a couple of times. It was a mess. Um, oh my gosh. it was, and and everyone and like I didn't know he was behind me the whole time. So you can hear the whole audience like talking shit. Like, is it a ghost? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? And like, it was a mess. Like, then like before the the movie was even on, like done, like you know the documentary the lights like in the whole house came on and it was like everyone's like it was like okay well it's almost done get out now like so yeah I, I that energy is like very very prevalent when you've been around it well you just yeah. know it period like when you've been around it you just know it it's interesting because I've seen the documentary by myself and Crystal put it on once um, at her house when I came when I came to Vegas to visit and I was pacing for like the solid time that documentary on mm -hmm. that TV. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why, to be totally honest with you. I was just, I couldn't stop pacing. Mm -hmm. Someone said, that's so weird because cinnamon is the only scent they use to cover the smell of bodies in apartments when someone passes on. Well, that's oh, terrifying. Thank you for letting me know how messed up I, I am. <laughs> I had a friend who used to help with cleanup and it was a cinnamon swell, smell. Ew. Wow. You know, that makes sense though. That makes sense that creeps me out yeah I'll if I'm around something dark and I'll be like I've done it even with you even when it's not dark I'm clairsentient I can get it's gross I'm the kind of I get this thing where like I can look at a picture of somebody and I can and like literally on my phone and I can tell you how they smell I hate that because sometimes it's not pleasant you know what I mean but like no, I'll I'll look, or I'll look at cat and I'll be like do you smell that or you know what I mean like it smells like cinnamon and that's I know it's my warning for something you're yeah. about to encounter something dark I know it's my warning for it and then ugh, I did not know they used I, it to cover dead bodies 
<laughs> he says messed up. So messed up. I have heard people, I can't remember what show I was watching where it happened, or if someone did hold me about an experience, but someone was somewhere in Europe where the bubonic plague was, and they kept smelling a strong scent of flowers. And they're like, this is so weird because you're literally in the middle of this like granite or like stone building. And come to find out, you think of that, that nursery rhyme, Ring Around the Rosy, a pocket full of posy. That was the bubonic plague. Ooh. That was based off the bubonic plague. So it was Ring Around the Rosy, because you start to get like red rashes, a pocket full of posies, which were flowers that would be put in someone's clothing to help them smell better because of how bad they smelled from the bubonic plague. Ew. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. They would burn the bodies after they died. The creepy part about that, too, is that's a nursery rhyme that sometimes if you're filming on the fourth floor of the Stanley Hotel, you'll hear the little kids sing that song. You do? Yeah, on the fourth. The fourth floor was uh, the nursery, and that was where the nannies stayed with for, like, the rich, and that was where the children lived with the fourth floor. Mainly the wing that's on, I think it's more of, like, the west wing. Um, but, yeah, we've got, I've gotten EVPs up there where you can hear little kids singing in it. Like, there's an area in there you can do, you can, like, stand. And if you listen careful enough, you can hear wind, like, they're going in a circle. Or, like, ash, you know, when you do the circle thing. So that's yeah. weird. Oh. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just saying I'd rather smell flowers than... Cinnamon? The plate. Oh. Okay, or that elf. I mean, I actually rather <laughs> smell cinnamon than elf, I'm not going to lie. But if, I mean, if we're talking about bubonic plague victims, I'd rather smell flowers than... Else. Yeah, so, same. I mean, rather than demons, know. you know. More, and it's, so I mean, it's, cinnamon. Cinnamon's it's better nice. than sulfur, cause like that's when I'm looking around, like who had Chipotle for lunch and who decided to film on set with Chipotle in their stomach. Oh, Chipotle in so long. You Where know what? Decided. I'm just gonna say it. I had a camera tech that did it to me once. Okay. Oh wait, I didn't think you told me that once. No. I did. I had a camera tech that filmed with me in Denver one time, and we had to crawl up this ladder to this attic that was just like really bad. The attic yeah. had, like, burned twice in the same place. It was weird. It was so bad. Anyway, we we cut for lunch after we did B-roll, and he, I said, don't eat anything heavy, man. You will cause us all to suffer. And he went to Chipotle and ate a burrito. And we were in the attic, which was very hard to access, and he almost shat himself from the Chipotle. And we kept thinking we were smelling demons. So honest to God, I have a, a rule book for when we're on set and you're not allowed to eat beans or Chipotle because you don't, you don't want to kill us. We don't want to become ghosts. No. No. And I might get it confused with a demon. Was it you? Was it the camera tech? Or was it a demon? Now I don't know. We just need to break out the cinnamon incense. Okay? I'd rather have cinnamon <laughs> That's creepy, man, that, that it covers dead bodies. That's just plain messed up. Like, oh, my God. I mean, I, I think that's interesting. I mean, that's so accurate. Ugh. Like, validation. That's awesome. Ugh. I messed up. I don't know why I got all the weird gifts, but it's fine. Um, okay. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. So you think you have an unhealthy obsession with Annabelle. That's good to know. <laughs> so I have that on warning. Look, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If there was, we had a chance to go and visit Annabelle again, I'd visit No, her. I mean, I would, too. I, I don't think Tony would invite me back at this point because of some of the things I've said about him. But it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <sighs> um, okay, now, Elfie got in on here, and she found some cool shit because that's just yeah, Elfie. Yeah, thank you, Elfie. Yeah. You're amazing. Elfie loves her research. She's a freak when it comes to research. So she was like, look, I've heard about all of these other dolls, but, like, I want to talk about some dolls that not a lot of people, like, know about. Mm. Um, and then you want to talk about witch balls. That's a, a mood. <laughs> witch balls. True, yeah. Okay, so I'm not, I'm going to butcher this, so don't come for me. Okay, Okiku? O-K-I-K-U. Okiku? I believe that's right. Okiku? Okiku? Um, God, Elfie, you had to give me all these hard words. I can't even pronounce it. Um, the doll resides in a temple, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slaughter yep. that. I'm gonna slaughter, hang on, just stand by. Okay. Elevator music. Japanese, okay, it's Japan. It's a city in Japan that I cannot pronounce. And it's called, it's spelled H-O-K-K-A-I-D-O. 
So um, she Not says that it looks like it's a pretty ancient story of this doll, but it was a doll that was supposedly bought in 1918 by a 17-year-old boy, and he bought it for his 3-year-old sister. Um, it said that she loved her new doll so much she took it everywhere with her, even sleeping with her in bed. And um, she gave it kind of a new hairstyle, it looks like. And she cropped the, its bangs very bluntly and then the back. The child, which was his sister, suddenly died um, after about a year and a half after a cold. But the family decided to keep the doll um, in sort of like a family shrine and named it after their, jo their daughter that, was, that had deceased. Um, and then they said that after the, the girl died, it, strange things started to happen with the doll. So they assumed that the child spirit sort of attached herself to the doll. See, now, the, these kind of stories make sense to me. Because absolutely, why wouldn't that happen when you lost your child? And, like, that's her favorite toy. Like, why wouldn't you keep it? Like, I feel like there's so many times with paranormal stories that people forget these people were human like us. Like, they want to look at it as a ghost story, and you're not realizing the empathetic side of, like, this was a child that died, and it was really sad and a traumatic for this family. So, um, suddenly now the family's claiming that the hair on the doll is actually starting to grow, and they believe that the doll essentially became fully possessed by the child that died. So, in 1938, the family decided to give the doll to this religious temple because they were sort of afraid and scared that she was going to, she was manifesting herself through it. Probably in, in the cultural beliefs, we're afraid that she hadn't like crossed on or she was stuck or something and didn't know what to do with it. Um, now, it's actually gotten to the point at this point where the scientists have examined the doll and they have found that the, the hair is actually human that continues to grow out of the doll, which is super crazy. Uh, oh, somebody knows, somebody's talking about they know Japanese. That's great, I'm so happy that you're here because I don't, and I, I'm obsessed with Japanese culture, I love Japan. Someday Tokyo, I'm gonna be there. Um, but, so it says that there's no photos that are allowed to be taken by the doll. The doll's hair is now knee length, even though they cut the hair still to this day. It still continues to grow. And it says people have claimed they've seen the mouth growing of the doll and that her teeth can be seen inside of her mouth growing as well. Um, and it says that the, t the doll is in the temple to keep it sort of safe. I'm just reading through the rest of Elfie's notes really quickly. Um, they, it says they have a doll memorial celebration to give respect to the doll. But they hold on to the doll because they're concerned that the child's spirit is still in there. Wow, that's like crazy. Oh my gosh. So I would need to see pictures. I would need to be in the presence of it to like give an opinion on it personally. But like I'm not going to deny it if there's scientists that have been involved in it. And obviously they've tested the hair to see if it's human. That's kind of strange. Weird. Well, it is weird, but it's a cultural thing. Because you don't know how, what their beliefs are specifically. And like if they believe... Obviously, they, they want to be religious, which is why they put it in the temple. But if it's True. still growing and it's still in the temple, that means not e not only religious things can stop possession from happening sometimes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's not doing anything, like, violent, I guess it's cool to just, like, dude, just chill in the temple. You know what I mean? Like, Given it occasional trimmings. I know. It's like, <laughs> what a random thing to say. Well... <laughs> You know, honey, your hair's been growing for a while now, so I feel like we need to, like, you know, take it back just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This um, Mr. Fritz is a vil Ugh, I hate ventriloquist. Oh, okay. Ventriloquist. Yeah, I don't do vin Do you like dummies, like ventriloquist dummies? Like, I'm not a fan of those. Well, they remind me of Goosebumps, though. They Me, too. That's my <laughs> trauma, okay? That's the only yeah. kind of dolls I don't like, because it reminds me of Goosebumps. I'm like, ugh. Um... So this is a dummy, and he started his little life in Germany. Why did all the haunted dolls start in Germany? What's going on in Germany? Oh, man. Um, it was a prisoner of a war camp, and the creator of the dummy was shot at the camp weeks before the war ended, and then the dummy was sent back home to the family. Um, Mr. Fritz has been passed through multiple collectors, never staying around for too long because of his haunts. The most recent owner um, found out that the door case for him was open, so he placed a camera on on Mr. Fritz to record it, and he saw that the eyes and mouth were moving on the dummy. 
gosh. Okay. I think I've seen video of this. Have I you? I send, send it to you. Yeah. Like, he's in a glass case, and you can clear, clearly see. See, now, this, th this would freak me out. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm not a... Like, I don't get scared of dolls. I don't really get scared of clowns. Like, the only kind of clowns I get scared of is when they're, like, actively jumping out at you. Like, anything that jumps out at me that's going to make me scream. You know what I mean? But, like, with this... With I don't, what is it with the ventriloquist, like... Why is it creepy? Is it because the jaw is like one piece and it's like, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Like what, and like the eyes, like the way they make them. It is. I don't, those do make me feel nauseous. I don't know why. Goosebumps. Uh, it's gotta be goosebumps. I'm going to blame RL Stein for that one. Okay, Letta is, a, is an Australian haunted doll from 1972. She was discovered underneath a porch in Australia, estimated to be about 200 years old. Possibly Romanian? Wow. Um, a psychic claimed that it was made by a Romanian person after their child had drowned, and the, the psychic claims that her spirit was transferred into the doll. We know how that worked out last time. Yeah, we've heard this story before. Letta has real human hair and a toy brain. He has caused it to rain outside, and he knocks on picture frames and shoves them off the walls. Dogs have also been known to want to attack the doll, and he emits some sort of, like, a real pulse. People also feel great sadness when, when they're around him. That's kind of sad. Really sad. The, the ventriloquist doll is the only one that really creeps me out really bad. Like, ugh. So, I mean, toy brain's a little weird. Yeah, why would you put in a toy brain? And it's 200 years old? Like, you had to have thought about that, like, quite a while what ago. Mean, what does a toy brain look like? I feel like I Haven't you to seen the, part. like, Papa, the Papa, like, what are those called? Those, like, collector toys? They've been cutting it open on, like, TikTok, and they have, like, a, like, a plastic brain inside. You haven't seen that? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I, I wouldn't waste the doll or the toy by cutting it open just for a plastic brain. Um... <laughs> So, how do you protect yourself from haunted dolls? Because, through witch balls, of course. Through witch balls. <laughs> Glass witch balls. Okay. That, so, the witch balls, I, I wanted to talk about because it corresponded with the island of the dolls because there were some witch balls hanging. Oh, that's right. I forgot to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. I forgot what, to. <laughs> why do you think the purpose... Okay. So, if you have a doll... You have an island that's abandoned in yeah. the middle of Mexico, in the middle of water, no, no like electric outlet and mm -hmm. thousands of creepy doll and doll pieces hanging all over the place mm -hmm. why are you going to put witch balls up to stop what you've now created that makes no sense to me I know it, it almost feels like somebody or Julian that you know with, were putting the dolls up felt like it kind of got out of hand or the energy got out of hand but they claim that if you have like a hollow glass ball that's like suspended in a window or in an area that has like high activity, it will like ward off evil spirits or um, evil spirits will be like attracted to the beauty of the ball. And there are these like glass blown, really pretty ornate glass balls. I don't really know. So at what it. point is your ball um, full? Um, <laughs> that's, that's a really good question. At what point do you have to get rid of your it's full ball? ball okay, here's a theory. Perhaps glass balls break. Okay. But, but then, then do you re release the spirits? Up. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's messed up. Okay, that's, yeah. that's messed up, catch. <laughs> I just had a revelation. And that's not I was trying to think of, like, crystals. You know, like, when, it, when right. they say when a crystal is, like, served its purpose and, like, it, you like, need busts. it. It, like, busts. Yeah. Yeah, but that wouldn't make sense. With the, with I, don't, I don't want no broken glass balls, okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's dangerous. Oh, but anyway, yeah. yeah, the balls can be any, you know, balls come in all shapes and sizes. You know what I mean? They're colorful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Doesn't Great matter. Paint. Yeah. They can yeah. be designed. Um, they can be ornate. Uh. <laughs> they can be big and little, you know, at the same time. <laughs> so if you see people with glass Scream. balls hanging in their kitchen, I would ask your, these people if they are witches, okay? Yeah, That's true. Really if you go on a date with somebody really and they have balls hanging from the ceiling, you know they they're a witch win. when. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so <laughs> that means that they have an evil spirit in their house, and you should probably just dip on out because they're trying to catch the evil spirit in their balls. Oh, God. Okay. Don't get Cat and I ranting because we'll just lose it. You know what I mean? We talk about balls for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> It'd be 
great. Oh, God. It's like the Vlad, <laughs> uh, when we did Vlad the Impaler, that was pretty rough. Oh, my God. I was, like, impaled. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! You like it, they took the staff to... up his hole, and I was like, "Cat, what are you doing?" It's like I don't um, know how else to say it. Um, Things were inserted places. Okay. So okay, do we think dolls can be haunted for sure? Yes. Absolutely. Do we think objects can be haunted for sure? Also for sure. Um, once Did again. You know, the horror stories are always of people being like, I told the doll off, but why, why are you, like, is your ego that inflated that you're going to go up to an inanimate object and, like, tell it to F off, and then you get, like, bad karma or you get in a car wreck? Like, why are you telling inanimate, if you don't believe, then why are you telling it off, is my question. I feel like it also starts with some of these psychics, man. No, no hate to psychics, but man. It always seems to get triggered worst when <laughs> when they get the advice of a psychic. So maybe don't do that. I don't believe. I mean, I have a, I have a really big issue with psychics. I really do. Yeah. I'm very lenient and careful with who I listen to that has quote abilities, just because. Yeah. They could be wanting money, and you know what I mean, like. And I mean, if, or, you know, you don't know what their intentions are. Yeah, like, if you have those kind of, if you really have those kind of abilities, could they push something or force something to go into said inanimate object? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, could they be, could they, cause, could that psychic cause the bad demonic thing to go into Annabelle? I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's kind of like going back to Lizzie Borden for a minute. There was a psychic that was working there. I know I've talked about this before, and I'm going to get on my soapbox. Everybody get ready. There was a psychic that was at Lizzie Borden's, and she claimed to have spoke to Lizzie herself. Which, by the way, there has been no evidentiary proof that Lizzie's still there. Everybody but Lizzie is there, essentially. But she, this psychic, I say it with qu air quotes... This psychic said that Lizzie Borden claimed that she was molested by her father, and that was why she murdered her stepmom and her father. But there's been no proof backing that up. And then what happens after that? Everybody goes into Lizzie Borden's and starts accusing the Bordens in ghost form of being child molesters. And there's no, like, there's no proof. It was just because a psychic said that. And, like, yeah. that stuff is what pisses me off so bad. And then all of a sudden, the Bordens, the mom and dad that are still living there, because that's who's there in spirit form, there's all these angry things happening. They're knocking things off the wall. They're tilting tables over. They're getting mad. Wouldn't you, if you were starting to get accused by strangers of child molesting? I'm not saying it did happen, and I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just right. saying that unless it's a fact, like what we're supposed to go off to with historical information, or you've captured it via like spirit box or some other way of information, you shouldn't be going around accusing spirits of that. Yeah, the activity did spike a lot really aggressively. Um, there were photos of even some investigators and people staying there of like having really bad scratches and like bruises on their bodies. Well, yeah, it went from being a somewhat pleasant place to stay and investigate, like the Stanley Hotel. And then it took right. a really dark turn because all these investigators are now going in, making a run, a muck of the place, like literally. Well, talking about, you know, mentioning things they don't really know about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a little too late for that theory. Well, it is, right now. but now you're going you know? in with these people that are now owning Lizzie Borden who are tweeting from the dead manager's account. Uh, I'm, oh they gosh. need to be releasing an apology because you know it's somebody from within there. They need to release a public apology, and I think they're trash, honestly. If they're letting their employees or not taking accountability for it, I think it's trash. Crazy. I mean, imagine that being your family member who died in June and then somebody's tweeting from the account. You're right, if it was hacked by a bot or hacked by someone else, it would be like retweeting porn or something weird or some random links. Yeah. It wouldn't be this heartfelt response of, I'm okay where I'm at. Who do you think is actually going to buy that anyways? It's messed up. It is. Some That's sick, twisted I mean, person. You know, the only good thing with social media now and just like with the internet in general is you can trace everything. Yep. 
So Amen. hopefully whoever it is, you could be traced back to whoever the heck it was. And karma perfect. always repays its debts, you know? Always. Yep. If you put out yep. good in the world, you'll get good back. And if you put out evil intent, that will also come back. So, that's all the tea I have. Tea. I feel like Kat and I are the only two that spill the tea. Elfie's like, I don't want to spill the tea. I'm like, okay, I'll do it with Kat. It's fine. Oh, Random. oh happy, happy late birthday to Elfie, too. Her birthday was last week. Happy late birthday. Go ahead. Um, so, dolls is tech equipment. I didn't oh. even know that doll was a thing. I just want to, like, mention Wait, wait, them. what? Wait, what? Okay, dolls There's as tech equipment. Oh, yes, it yeah. is. So we had like the EMF bear, Boo Buddy, which is pretty much an EMF bear, which is a different name. They have a Daisy Trigger doll. I think Boo Bear has oh. like an ovulus in it where the EMF bear, we have, we own the EMF bear, but I don't have Boo yes. Buddy. Yeah. I think the Boo Bear, all it is, is it has an ovulus in it. So it's just, but it's like a $400 teddy bear with an ovulus. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's weird. But if you scroll down in the notes, Crystal, look at Daisy. Daisy. You mean the Daisy. doll? Yeah. Who put that picture there? I did. <laughs> I needed you to see a visual, okay? Let me this just, doll, I, I'm gonna share this with everybody, okay? Please do, because this doll is whack. <laughs> like. So who is Daisy? Because she's gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> no, but literally someone created that. Like you can buy this doll. Oh, this is an EMF doll? Yeah, look That's at horrifying. it. That's horrifying. That's demonic. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, whoever, Literally. yeah, that's a mistake. And I bet you like, they're charging like $800 for it, too. Probably. I went on the <laughs> website, so I have to send it to you later. It's How hilarious. much was it? Uh, expensive. Wait, what is, wait, what is it called? <laughs> wait, 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 okay, okay. Daisy wait. the Trigger Doll? Trigger Doll. Okay, uh, here it is here. It's at funkylighting.com. Funky Lighting? Okay, yeah, that's a new company. Store. Oh. It's 100 and $29. They're out of um, the UK, and it has a built-in K2 meter, which those are kind of shit to investigate with anyways. Right. But so the that's, eyes, like, glow too. That's why they're only two, it's only 100 bucks, but, like... That's terrifying. That's t it's horrifying, honestly. Are, are dolls really haunted, is a question on the website. This is Daisy. She comes with an electrostatistic sensor... When Daisy's activated, friend. it's displayed via Bluetooth lit eyes. Yeah, that's horrible, whoever decided that. She also has a K2-style EMF circuit built right into her on her chest area. The sensor also triggers a sound buzzer when activated. The eyes feature a glow-in-the-dark coating, which leaves a lasting glow after each trigger. That's too <laughs> Who's writing your descriptions? I mean... I mean Props to them. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, they're very descriptive, you know uh, what I'm saying? The activation has to take place in a dark environment. Power oh God, is no then supplied with a battery, a 9 volt battery on the underside of the sitting doll. The EMF circuit can be turned on and off via hidden button. Oh my God. The doll has a flexible wire antenna coming out of her head. Holy shit. My God. <laughs> This is an electrostatic sensor antenna, which should be handled with care and not overly bent or crushed at its exit point. <laughs> oh, it's a porcelain doll. That's dangerous. If it falls over, it's going to break. There goes 150 bucks. Darn, you have to buy a new one. That's exactly what they want. They have four different angles of her. Look at that. Look at the third angle. Oh, there is. Ooh. Well, her dress looks like it's a little ripped. We should link this. Hang on. I'm going to link this in the chat, you guys. Oh, cat. We're going to link this everywhere because this is hilarious. Ugh, okay, I'm linking it on YouTube and Twitch, y'all. Okay. I'm just saying. Oh, oh my God. Created by hand. Our haunted dolls are first totally deconstructed to base components. They are theatrically aged, painted, and then distressed. Theatrically aged. The idea is that they should look like they are old and lost in a long forgotten toy discovered in an old basement. Okay. They said they are much like a film prop in a horror movie. Yeah, it looks like that pretty much. 100%. And you just got some free advertising. If you want to sponsor via Ghost Girl Diaries, hit me up. Crystal at ghostgirldiaries.com. 
I'll promote your strange, creepy ass doll. On that note, um, I will not be ordering one because it will haunt me in my dreams and I'm shutting my laptop. Creepy? Yeah, that's I had, horrifying. I had it in there, I'm sorry. I had to put it <laughs> Someone said, it will also summon demons in five seconds flat. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh my god. Pretty much. Gosh, this is where our combos go, you guys. Yeah, sorry. if you want to go to funkylighting.com, I'm not sponsored by them yet. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. That is our podcast for this week. I don't even know. What am I doing with Elfie next week? Do we even know the topic? Let me look right now. We're just going to look right now. I think she's on vacation right now, so I haven't chatted with her. But no. She'll be back next week, though. And um, where am I? What's happening? It's probably a oh, Mothman. I'm pretty sure it's Mothman. Oh, Mothman. That yeah. is correct. That is going to be a good one because she's been to Mothman's encampment, okay? Oops. Like, you guys are getting behind the scenes, like, paranormal state chat that, like, she's never talked about before. And that is the shit I love. You know what? I had a question on, on my, like, final note. Crystal's final thoughts. We'll call it Crystal's Crystal's final thoughts. It's a witchy corner with Crystal, okay? Um, I had a message from... Uh, somebody on social media and I thought it was really good and they said um, how did you get Elfie involved with Ghost Girl Diaries and I, I didn't want to respond because I thought it would be a really cool story to share it's really short so um, when I first started Ghost Girl Diaries like literally like 10 years ago I remember um, I was a huge fan of Paranormal State and at the time I had a co-owner and I remember looking over at my co-owner and I was like he was like, you should think about like what you want to visualize for Ghost Girl Diaries. And this was like even before I started YouTube. And he was like, you should get like inspiration from other shows or whatever. So I, I remember watching Paranormal State. I'd seen it before. But I looked at him and I was like, I'm going to be working with Elfie from Paranormal State. And he was like, what? Like, what? Like, what? what's Elfie from, like, <laughs> let me know how that works. You know what I mean? Yep. And, um... I was like, I'm telling you, someday I'm going to work with Elfie. I just know it. It was probably past life connection thing. You know what I mean? Like, when you just know, you know type of thing. Same with, like, Kat and I are, like, old past life shit we've been through, you know? So many things in Kat and my life have, like, correlated. It's really creepy. So we're, like, sisters from another mystery. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, about five years ago, I found out through the grapevine of, like, friends and, like, producers that Elfie was a fan of Ghost Girl Diaries. So at this point, like, I'd already been working for, like, five years doing, like, YouTube, blah, blah, and, like, and I was, like, what? Like, what? What? Shut up. You know, I was, like, I was totally, like, fanning out. You know, like, no way. Like, Elfie knows me. Like, because there were some other people that had messaged me. Sergi had messaged me. Sergi, is that how you pronounce his name? From Paranormal State, too, and some other people. Anyway, um, found out Elfie was a fan. So then one day, out of the blue, I got a notification that Elfie was following me on Instagram. I had a, I had a lucid moment. I like, I was like, I went into like a sheer state of panic. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And I was like, just freaking out. You know what I mean? And, um, like a couple, I wasn't going to, like, I'd already been following her, but I wasn't going to say anything. I was just like, just be chill. Like, just be chill. You know what I mean? Like, and like, a, <laughs> it was so bad. I was like, I was out of my body. It was so bad. And then, like, a couple weeks went by, and Elfie messaged me on Instagram. And I was, like, panicking. I was, like, oh, my God. I think I even, like, didn't message her back for, like, a week because I was, like, scared to say the wrong thing. Like, literally. I was, like, what's wrong with you, Crystal? My God. Get a grip. Get it together. And, um... I, every day. I know. So I messaged her back, and she was like, dude, like, love, love the female empowerment shit. Like, you know what I mean? And so we had, um, we stayed in contact. We exchanged phone numbers. Been friends for, like, a few years at that point. And then um, 2020 happened, which we all know with COVID. And she had messaged me a few times, and she was like, dude, like, I want to come on a podcast. Like, we should do. And I was like, oh, my God. You... Elfie from Paranormal State wants to come on my podcast? Like, what? You know what I mean? Like, I was still having a moment. It's like, Jesus! Like, issues, man. And um, we couldn't get together. And then in January, or maybe it was December of, of last year, like, literally just this past one, 
I messaged her and I was like, dude, let's just like do the thing. Like we keep saying we're going to do it. Like, let's just do the thing. And she's amazing. Like, like I, I, sw- I don't know if I manifested that, but like you're, you love Elf. Like we're like the same person we times all, three. So true. Like we all just like vibe really well. It's amazing. Really, yeah. Like perfect. Perfect. She's amazing. Yeah. Elfie's the shit. She's the poo. We love you, Elfie. Yeah, we love her. And, you know, Kat's <laughs> obviously the poo, too. She's amazing, too. And, Aww, um, you yeah, we're, we're in we're in this together. You're, you like what you do, right? Do you like being here? I love it. You're not, I, you I, mean you're not miserable? You know what I mean? No. I miss Vegas so much, too. Yeah. I miss it so much. Well, soon. Panini needs to go away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Whatever, whatever. We're just going to have to deal with it. Just have to work it's true. It. We're still doing the thing and proud yeah. of that. Yeah. Proud of that. I'm proud so. of my crew. We've won Hello. four film festivals. So haters, <laughs> that's what I think. Yay! I am <sighs> so really hard work always pays off in the end. Yep, I'm proud of everybody. So thank you. And and once last thing I want to say is thank you to our fans because we wouldn't be here without you. We just had another phenomenal blowout month. We had twenty five hundred downloads in one month on our podcast that, that's across all of our um we're on literally pandora everywhere literally iheart radio spotify itunes we're literally everywhere but we had a phenomenal month it just keeps getting better which is why i'm going to try to keep pushing tiktok even more and just yeah, yeah thank you guys for your support this whole time because it's just getting better and better and like we love you guys and we appreciate you guys so 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 much um schedule coming up mothman's going to be good and i think one more stream after that's going to be good there's a possibility after the next two weeks that I might be going MIA again. Um, and that's just because work. So um, keep staying up to date on TikTok because our TikTok's going awesome. Follow us on social media. Make sure you download our podcast. And thank you guys. We appreciate you so much for supporting us all these years. And as always, we will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Back from the dead.